I think Christianity shows itself most powerfully in the unnoticed life. Our tiny choices and our tiny movements towards God may not seem like much because they're all occurring in the middle of our weaknesses and our failures. And so we forget to look at those and all we think about are all the missteps that we make in our lives. We forget about the steps forward that we take. But you know, someday you and I are going to stand together in a great expanse called heaven. And we're going to stand before the Almighty God of eternity. And on that day, Jesus is going to unroll this beautiful tapestry. And that tapestry is made up of a mosaic of thousands upon thousands of tiny responses that we each make to God. It's going to show the times that we display God's love and mercy to those around us. And when you and I and all of heaven see that tapestry, maybe then we will realize that our lives of faith are made up by a string and series of small things, not huge events in our lives. That we're made up of things like tiny words of encouragement, pats on the back, little acts of service and sacrifice, a can of corn here, a quarter in the benevolence fund there, faithfulness in our thoughts, words, and deeds. I read a story recently that occurred during World War II that, to me, proves the point I'm trying to get across this morning about the power of tiny acts in our faithful growth and discipleship. It was during the last few months of World War II, and the British were flying out of England every night to bomb Berlin. And the bombers would take off from the airstrip in England and they would be surrounded by tiny fighter pilots and planes. Because the big bombers were easy targets. They could be hit easily. And so it was the job of these little, tiny, smaller fighter planes to keep the enemy away from the bombers. And one night after, success, after a successful bombing raid in Berlin, they were headed back to the safety of the airstrip in England. And the bombers, in heading home, were attacked by a large group of German fighter planes. And somehow, during one of the dogfights, one bomber found itself flying alone. There were no other fighter planes around it to protect it. All of a sudden, they realized, out of nowhere, a German fighter plane had come into the picture. Tracer bullets started flying past the cockpit. They realized they were in trouble. Then they heard it, bullets hitting the fuselage, lodging into the gas tank. And they were just waiting for the explosion because they knew they were going to crash into the English Channel. They could see fuel pouring out. And as they waited and waited, no explosion occurred. Miraculously, they made it back to their air base. They all came out safe and sound. And a few hours after they had landed, they were in their barracks, and the mechanic came in, and he handed the pilot five bullets that were crumpled but not exploded. He said, we found these in your gas tank. And as the pilot held them in his hands, he looked at them and he carefully began to open up the shells. And to his and the rest of the crew's amazement, there was a wad of paper inside each one of them. And they took the wads of paper out and they each unro unrolled it and pulled it apart and began to read the message that was on it. The note said, we are Polish prisoners of war forced to make bullets in a German factory. 
When the guards are not looking, we do not fill the bullets with gunpowder. It's not much, but it's the best we can do. Please tell our families that we're alive. The note was signed by four prisoners of war in a German POW camp. <coughs> Just a few bullets out of the many millions of bullets made during the war. Those five bullets made the difference for the crewmen on one British bomber. If anyone ever gives you a subscription to Reader's Digest, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, there's no end to the good that can come out of our lives from tiny decisions, tiny actions or even tiny words of encouragement. Small cans of food, <coughs> an extra blanket, a word of forgiveness, a simple godly decision, or just a well-timed prayer can help us recognize the power of the ordinary, the significance what we often think is insignificant. The eternal difference that ordinary, messy, unfinished, under construction people <coughs> just like you and me can make in God's kingdom. And all of it starts with the attributes of a poor widow that we heard about this morning. A genuine heart, a grateful spirit, and a generous attitude. If we want to impress God, I think we simply need to give ourselves 